and we'll talk about them in a little bit. Um, so we do have a partnership with our academic writing program, which is where we do our English 101 instruction. Um, we teach anywhere from about 180 to 190 instruction sessions per year. Um, we also, as I mentioned, oversee the Research and Teaching Fellowship, which is a teacher training program and a mentorship program for MLIS students. We normally accept about six students um, per cycle into that program. Um, we also support other librarians with their teaching duties. So University of Maryland does have a subject liaison model for our reference and instruction librarians. And we, we support them with lesson planning, uh, material development, assessment. We do some internal workshops, help with instruction tools and things like that. And then finally, within our unit, um, our um, unit head is also the uh, liaison to the College of Information, which includes um, the University of Maryland's MLIS program. So we'll start off with, oh, go ahead, Amber. No, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, so we'll start off with talking about how we taught ourselves about AI. We're going to be talking about multiple interventions we took in our practice, uh, but we should start uh, as if we needed a reminder by talking about why it was important for us specifically as non-subject matter experts and librarians on our campus to be able to engage with this technology. So let's take ourselves back to why it was so urgent for us to learn about AI in late 2022 and early 2023. So at the time, ChatGPT had just been released, and our campus, like most campuses across the nation, was in panic mode, scrambling to respond to ChatGPT to create resources, update assignments, set policies uh, for a technology we were unfamiliar with, and grapple with what this new tech meant for the future of instruction and higher education as a whole. So as a unit, Teaching and Learning Services has instruction responsibilities to numerous user groups, both inside the library and across campus. So we knew that AI would intersect with our existing instruction to all of these groups. So to appropriately teach them and to make decisions about what to teach them, we needed a grasp of the technology ourselves. So how did we go about teaching ourselves and getting ourselves to a place where we understood enough to teach others? We started off by using the tools ourselves. We think this is very important if you're trying to develop any sort of AI instructional materials or having a grasp of these kind of tools. Getting hands-on experience with a research tool rather than only relying on watching a video or having someone else describe it to you is a core part of how we teach students about library products, right? So we found it the best way to teach ourselves about this technology. We also thought it was important to seek out a learning community and make ourselves part of it. By necessity, everyone outside of the machine learning field was suddenly a new learner when it came to AI, so we wanted to listen to experiences of our fellow learners. So we reached out to other librarians and both graduate and undergraduate students for anecdotal experience about both using AI tools and the environment and discourse around AI in their professional and personal circles. Finally, we gathered resources using some strategies that we still use as continuing learning strategies. We went to every AI presentation and workshop that we could get our hands on. We searched for newly created guides to AI, browsed through resource guides assembled by educators and various institutions like the Department of Education. We also gleaned information from users posting on social media about their experiences with AI. Uh, the R Chat GPT subreddit has been particularly useful. It's filled with people who are strong proponents of AI and posting about their usages of the technology, but it also provides us a lot of real life examples of AI mistakes and shortfalls that people end up posting about uh, that helps us be aware of things we should be aware of. And finally, we tried to read as much of the burgeoning AI scholarship, both inside and outside LIS as we could. AI is a rapidly changing technology, and even now we are, as a field, still in a constant learning stage. So these are all things that we're still doing. We, by the way, also have a bibliography of some of these resources available at this QR code and short link. I'll paste the link in the chat, um, and this will also be available at the end of the presentation. Sorry, I realized I was muted. Um, so now that we have talked a little bit about teaching ourselves about AI, and again, we are still continually learning about AI as things evolve and change. So we are like in this constant state of learning about AI. Um, but once we kind of started getting comfortable with AI, um, we started thinking about like how we were going to approach AI in our library instruction and how we were going to start incorporating it. Um, so it's important to think about like who we were supporting when it came to um, AI literacy. And we kind of had four major groups that we needed to provide support for. 
Um, first was our academic writing program. Um, as teaching and learning services, we are the liaison to the academic writing program. They are who we do the, the most of our instruction with. Um, so we had to work very closely with them to help develop our approach to AI instruction. Um, we're also supporting our research and teaching fellows. They do a lot of our library instruction alongside of us. Um, and so we were had to support how to teach them how to teach about AI. Um, we also had our UMD students at large. Again, we have almost 40,000 students on our campus and a mix of undergraduate and graduate level students. Um, so how do we teach them about AI? And then finally, we have our subject librarians. We provide a lot of support for our subject librarians um, with instruction. So how are we going to prepare librarians across all different disciplines um, how to talk about AI in the classroom? Um, so how we got started with kind of approaching this, um, we started by using what we had personally learned about AI. Um, we had spent a lot of last summer really like learning a lot a about AI, testing out the tools, doing a lot of reading, a lot of thinking. Um, so once we kind of had like left that stage, and again, we're always still kind of in that stage, um, but we started to use what we had learned so far to help us have conversations with other people. Um, so we had a lot of conversations with our academic writing program because we needed to find out, you know, what their stance was going to be. That really did help inform a lot of our approach. Um, we also talked with our graduate student teachers or uh, research and teaching fellows since they were also going to be teaching about AI alongside of us. And they occupied this interesting space as a graduate student teacher and also as a graduate student. So their perspective was really valuable. Um, we also talked with other subject librarians in different disciplines to help us identify like how to approach creating teaching materials. We wanted to make sure that we had a lot of different diverse perspectives on AI before we started going forward because we knew so many people were looking to us that we wanted to make sure that anything we put out um, had implications for kind of all of our users. Um, something that I really want to stress in what we did is that we really only worked with our existing partnerships and worked mostly with materials that we already had in place. Um, if you remember summer 2023, I feel like everyone was in a like panic over AI and trying to update it and learn about it and like incorporate it into like all of their like teaching and materials. So we wanted to start by thinking about like, who are we already partnering with um, that felt like kind of a natural collaborator to talk about AI? And also like what materials did we already have in place um, that we could incorporate AI literacy into. Um, and this helped make everything a lot more manageable for us. Um, but after we kind of had all of these conversations, we started identifying kind of where we wanted to infuse um, AI literacy. We started kind of brainstorming some general ideas that kind of helped inform our approach going forward. Um, please keep in mind that these ideas were brainstormed in the summer of 2023. Um, so I think some of the ideas might be a little outdated at this point um, and something we definitely would want to come back to, but we'll talk about that at the end. Um, but our brainstormed ideas were that like chat, chat, chat GPT's answers were not authoritative. Um, chat GPT, and that was really the tool we were focused on at the time, um, builds on what you feed it. So that became issues of privacy and credit and copyright. Um, ChatGPT does not distinguish between scholarly and popular sources. Um, we were thinking about like, how do you use ChatGPT in the right context? Um, wanting to understand like what you needed to do in order to effectively prompt ChatGPT. Um, and also needing enough background information to evaluate whatever answer you were given, which was something that was going to have huge implications, especially for our English 101 students who are kind of embarking on academic research for the first time. So with all of that in mind, uh, we had to think about two of our stakeholder groups, first of all, uh, the academic writing program and the research and teaching fellows. The academic writing program administers all English 101 courses, and the Research of Teaching Fellowship teaches a large number of our English 101 library sessions. So in designing AI instruction for our English 101 classes, we had to keep in mind our responsibility to both groups, providing a structure for our graduate fellows, as well as our AWP instructors. 
So as we were brainstorming our own learning outcomes and policies for English 101 teaching about AI, the academic writing program was setting their own guidelines around the use of AI in the classroom. So English 101 is a large program with a large number of instructors, and those instructors are from a broad variety of backgrounds, a mix of experienced senior faculty, adjuncts, and graduate students, um, and some of those are teaching for the first time. AWP provides a standard set of policies, syllabi, and assignments to try to provide some conformity among classes. And we were keeping an eye on the policy they were setting in order to make sure that what we were teaching students wasn't blatantly contradicting what the program hoped to teach on AI. So the syllabus statement that AWP settled on was that generative AI tools can be effectively employed in the writing process if used responsibly. That instructors would discuss and demonstrate how to use AI responsibly to enhance your writing, but that using AI to do assignments for you would not be permitted. AWP was hoping for students to use AI mainly in outlining and possibly drafting. However, instructors have a certain amount of leeway in deciding whether or not to follow those policies. So to get a sense of what instructors would actually be doing in the classroom, at the beginning of the fall 2023 semester, we added two questions to our library instruction request form, which we ask instructors to fill out at the beginning of the semester. We asked, will you allow students to use AI in your course? And are you planning on including any activities or lessons relating to AI in your course? And if so, what are they? We found that despite the AWP official policy, over half our instructors were going to blanket ban any use of AI whatsoever. 15% were still unsure a couple of weeks before the beginning of the semester. Excuse me. Uh, of the 32% who said yes, most of them were only going to allow AI use in certain limited capacities. So this meant that we had to design our lesson plans and learning outcomes to accommodate a broad variety of policies. Some instructors wanted students to learn some practicalities of AI. Some instructors wanted students to learn some basic ideas about AI information literacy, even though they were not allowing AI use in their classes. And some instructors did not want any mention of AI at all. So this informed our process when designing our lessons. And Amber is going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, so we started with coming up with learning outcomes for AI literacy, um, and these are specific for our academic writing program. Um, we did share our learning outcomes and all of the materials you're going to see with our subject librarians um, with kind of the caveat of like, this is what teaching and learning services is talking about with our academic writing program. Um, this can be a basis for your own um, programs or your own thoughts on incorporating AI literacy into your own disciplines. Um, so we did share these materials with our other librarians. Um, but the learning outcomes that we had come up with in 2023 for our academic writing program um, were that students will be able to think critically about AI and not assume that an AI provided answer is the only answer. Students will be able to recognize that AI often provides incorrect answers, but that it also often returns correct ones. Um, and students will be able to apply lateral reading techniques to evaluate AI generated answers. Um, so at the time in 2023, we were really focused on kind of like the authoritative um, nature of AI and whether or not students were going to implicitly trust um, whatever AI was um, presenting as fact. Um, so we did do kind of a seer, like almost a tiered approach to how we were thinking about AI in library instruction, because we kind of had those three groups. We had instructors who were embracing AI in the classroom and wanted us to talk about it. Um, we had people who were still kind of unsure with what they wanted, and we had people who didn't want um, students to be able to use AI in the classroom, but they still wanted us to have some discussions about AI. So we kind of incorporated like a few different ways to do AI literacy within library instruction. Um, the first thing we did was that we did create a new lesson plan um, for our English 101 classes. Um, so what we decided to do is our lesson plan focus ended up being about ghost citations or hallucinated citations. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, um, generative AI like ChatGPT is pretty notorious for kind of making up false information. Um, or if you ask it for like a list of citations, it'll give you like a list of citations, but they're, they are not real books or articles. Um, we did a lot of testing with this and we found that oftentimes like ChatGPT would give us maybe the name of a real scholar and perhaps like a journal that they either publish infrequently or maybe like they 
like that journal is related to their um, research area, um, but the titles would always be fake. What we found the most interesting was when the title wouldn't be accurate, but it would be very similar to an article that, you know, that real author had published, um, just slightly different. Um, and that's really what we got super excited and fascinated with. Um, and it aligned really well with our stakeholder interests with AWP. Um, maybe you saw this at your own institutions. UMD was getting like multiple requests for books and articles um, that were generated by AI and did not exist. Um, and that was something that the academic writing program really attached to. Um, so this concept aligned well with their interests um, and it addressed some information literacy gaps for students. Um, the other reason why we were interested in this particular kind of area of focus and created this lesson plan was because it had implications for both undergraduate and graduate students. So in teaching and learning services, our focus is primarily on undergraduate students, but many of our subject liaisons at UMD work with graduate level students as well. So we did share um, this activity with our other librarians and kind of wrote the lesson plan in a way that it could be applied to either group, depending on what you wanted to focus on. Um, so for the undergraduates, we really focused on like the evaluating authority aspect of ghost citations and whether or not these sources are um, accurate or not, or what information is accurate. Um, for graduate students, we wanted to focus more on like the ethical implications of ghost citations on a scholarly profile, especially uh, because our graduate students are emerging scholars in their fields, and we thought it would be something just very interesting to talk to emerging scholars about. Um, so we did create a lesson plan and supplemental materials um, revolving around ghost citations um, that help students figure out like what information is accurate in the citation and what implications does that have on research. Um, so this is um, just a screenshot of our um, worksheet for our ghost citations activity and this is linked in our bibliography that Ben shared earlier. Um, and as the QR code on the sides, this is linked with the lesson plan and talking points and everything. Um, so what students do in this activity is that they are given um, several citations and they're all ghost citations, like they are all fake citations and students know that from the beginning that these are not real citations. Um, so what we have students do is they know that these articles and they're all articles um, do not exist, but certain elements of the articles might be true or helpful. Um, so what they need to do is they need to employ lateral reading strategies to figure out like, is this author a real author? And if so, like, is are they an author that regularly publishes in this area? Maybe this is giving you the name of somebody to look up um, or same thing with a journal. Um, for like the article title, we use this as a way to help students come up with keywords. So even though like this article does not exist and is not real, are there keywords you can pull out of this title that can help you in a database search? Um, so this is one way that we have approached AI literacy in the classroom for instructors who are really interested in talking about AI with their students. Um, and this is like the one activity that we made from scratch um, to include kind of in our repertoire for teaching. But like we said, we also wanted to kind of adapt things we already had. Um, something else we wanted to do to go along with both this worksheet and kind of like the materials that we adapted is that we came up with talking points about AI. So for instructors who maybe just wanted us to have a conversation about AI with students, um, we came up with some talking points that were specific to our academic writing program. Um, so for example, like kind of our main talking points, we wanted to talk about like AI being good and bad at different things and that you know, um, AI can be helpful for you, but it can also be harmful for you and for other groups. Um, we talked about AI filling gaps by making up knowledge. Um, this was especially important for our academic writing program students um, because they are doing research about a new topic really for the first time. So it can be really difficult um, to use AI, which is kind of our third point, um, for background research, because if AI is constantly creating, making up knowledge, all of the knowledge still sounds legitimate because it's smart enough 
to make up something that sounds right and you don't know anything about this topic yet, how is the student supposed to know what is accurate and what is what is not accurate? Um, so we kind of start talking about like where are places to go to learn about topics before you would um, even incorporate any sort of AI for research help. Um, so these were kind of our main talking points that we used in um, our English 101 classes. And again, we did share these um, with our subject librarians. But like I mentioned, we also did update some of our existing activities um, to just kind of incorporate AI literacy in spaces that were already existing and felt like kind of natural places. Um, so in addition to the new lesson plan that we created on ghost citations, um, we also started thinking about like our current activities that we had. Um, one of our most popular activities that we do with our English 101 students is our evaluating authority activity. We felt like it lent itself really well to AI literacy, and it was very commonly requested from instructors. Um, in this activity, students will be divided into four groups, and each of the four groups um, are given a different source to evaluate. So one group always has a scholarly source, one group has a popular source, um, one group has a government source, and one group has what we've always called in the past our wild card source. Um, in the past, our wild card source has been like, we once used like Instagrams, like terms and conditions, um, student newspaper articles we've used in the past. Um, so we decided for 2023, 2024, we were going to use an AI source um, as our wild card um, for our evaluating authority activity. So just like a simple change like that um, was an easy way to incorporate um, AI literacy, like within this activity that already existed and led to some great discussions with students. Um, so we really gave people, um, so librarians and our research and teaching fellows, three ways to incorporate AI literacy in our English 101 instruction. Um, they could do our ghost citations activity. Um, they could discuss AI in the context of like the evaluating authority activity and kind of our like supplemental um, talking points. Um, or if the instructor was uncomfortable with us mentioning AI in the classroom, we could, we told our like research and teaching fellows, like you don't have to bring up AI if the instructor or yourself is not really comfortable talking about it because we are all still learning about like this technology. Um, so we also, like I've kind of alluded to, um, we needed to talk about our um, research and teaching fellows about AI. So again, our research and teaching fellows are graduate student teachers, they're MLIS students, um, and they do a lot of English 101 instruction alongside of us, but they are also new and emerging librarians and new and emerging teachers. So on top of like learning how to teach and getting comfortable with one shot instruction, um, our fellows also had to get comfortable starting to talk about AI when they didn't really know a ton about this technology. Um, so with our research and teaching fellows, we shared a lot of our, we shared all of our talking points and we really designed these to help our fellows um, with teaching um, and also shared our lesson plan and slides with fellows to kind of help them incorporate AI literacy into their own teaching. Um, we also led some workshops and practice sessions for that ghost citations worksheet with our fellows to walk them through the lesson plan to figure out like how it was working. Um, when it was being taught, what they thought of it. So we really gave them the opportunity to kind of play around with the lesson plan. Our research and teaching fellows, we are very lucky. Um, they take a one credit course um, through um, UMD's iSchool where the MLIS program is um, that is dedicated to talk specifically about the research and teaching fellowship that's taught by Ben and I. Um, so we were able to have just an AI activity focus week where we talked a lot about AI, its implications, um, for library instruction in higher ed and gave them the opportunity to play with um, our ghost citations activity and also just to kind of practice using AI and talking about it with students. So we had designed learning outcomes for our anchor academic program and provided lesson plans and guidance for our research and teaching fellows, but we also needed to turn to providing resources for the rest of campus. As we mentioned before, we have a large number of students at the university and we had students come into the libraries with questions about AI. 
when our subject specialists were concerned about their ability to answer those questions. So to address both of those concerns, we created an AI and information literacy module in Canvas, which is our learning management system, and a companion LibGuide. So any instructor could integrate the Canvas module into their course space and edit it however they chose, giving them a, a basis to talk about AI with their students and providing some info for them as well. So to create this module, we partnered with the Teaching and Learning Transformation Center, which is a teacher training and instructional support institute at UMD for grad students and faculty members. We focused the module and guide on information literacy issues surrounding AI, and we focused on issues that may come up for students as they engage in research for assignments. We also tried to move away from the plagiarism prevention focus of a lot of our material at the time and tried to move towards helping students become informed user, users excuse me, of a new technology. So we had a lot of conversations both internally and with our campus partners about what to include in the module. As we mentioned before, we did a lot of experimentation with ChatGPT, uh, which we really focused on because that uh, was and still really is kind of the primary tool in a lot of students' minds. Um, but we also did experiments with other Gen AI, trying to use them in ways that we've seen students use research tools in the past and discovering recurring issues to highlight. We also had some demonstrated AI literacy gaps already apparent from our work at the libraries. So uh, we mentioned earlier, a large number of requests for books and articles that did not exist. We also saw students using ChatGPT as a replacement for Google and trying to find background info. And there was further confusion on how Gen AI actually works and what individual tools actual capabilities are. So this goes into the idea of computer objectivity that we also tried to dispel, this idea that because an answer is coming from an AI, it seems more objective, even though it can have biases baked in and is still making decisions about what information to serve and not serve. And as we mentioned before, we recognize that there are very strongly pro-AI and anti-AI students, some students who are very excited about AI and don't really want to hear a bad word said about it, other students who are strongly against using AI at all, and concerned about the ethical issues or the future of their fields. So we wanted to create something for both camps since it's increasingly integrated into information systems. Everyone needs to understand it even if they're never using AI directly. Uh, so for instance, we included links to guides on practicing with different types of Gen AI, but also tools like Glaze, which is an anti-AI art scraping tool. We put a lot of careful consideration into trying to walk that line, including debating how much AI generated imagery to put into the module. So with all of that in mind, we decided on four sections of content for the module in the LibGuide. The first section is on how AI tools work. We have a basic overview of some terms and mechanics of Gen AI, as well as a section we called using AI carefully and thoughtfully. So this was introducing both issues of accuracy and security, as well as labor issues surrounding AI training and biases that can be reproduced and magnified by AI if left unchecked. So um, for us, these are all integral parts of how these tools work. And so they're important to understand for all users. We had videos explaining some of these concepts recorded by faculty members from UMD's Trustworthy AI and Law and Society Institute, or TRAILS. And we had a quiz on content from the section for students to check uh, their understanding. So the second section was on fact checking and assessing AI generated content. We gathered numerous examples of common ways AI tools make mistakes and gave students a lateral reading based framework for fact checking AI outputs on their own. Um, can we move to the next slide? Thank you. Um, then we had videos demonstrating AI fact checks in action. And finally, we had a quiz for students to test out their lateral reading skills on a separate chat GPT prompt that we provided. So students could see in real time how well uh, these kind of skills were serving them with an actual prompt. For our final two sections, we had been getting a lot of questions about citing chat GPT and other AI in academic contexts. Um, so we had information about citing AI in APA, MLA, and Chicago. Um, and we had a final page that we called Level Up, which was a list of ways to explore further, more tools that we hadn't covered in the module, prompt writing tips for mid-journey and other AI, and news articles and other resources to explore further aspects of the AI conversation. So that's kind of a whirlwind tour of what's in the module. Uh, there's a link to explore the module yourself or add it to one of your own courses uh, in the bibliography. So we ended up seeing that 118 professors across campus added the module to their course spaces and 29 institutions outside of UMD have incorporated into learning materials of their own. We've also had over 7,000 hits on the AI LibGuide, which shows that there's a desire for this information among students outside of these 118 classes. 
so students were able to come to us with more background knowledge. So subject librarians unfamiliar with AI didn't have to be the first line of instruction. This also fulfilled our goal of giving librarians and staff a resource to not only point patrons towards, but learn some things about AI themselves. So this is now a teaching resource that we can use and will update indefinitely, both for internal and external use. We're now in the process of updating it again this summer, which we'll talk a little bit more about at the end of our presentation. Okay. So the last group that we were really focused on supporting um, with AI literacy were our subject librarians. Um, so what we wanted to do was we wanted to talk with our subject librarians about AI. I'm sure, um, as was the same on your campuses, there was a lot of anxiety from subject librarians about like learning about this technology, um, what kind of implications it was going to have in their disciplines, how they were going to talk to faculty about this, their students. Um, so there was a lot of anxiety around AI. Um, once again, we wanted to leverage some platforms that we already had existing. Um, so we developed what we have called our AI chat series. Um, so we use an existing platform that we have at UMD called the Fearless Teaching Institute. Um, this is the UMD Library's internal professional development program for libraries, faculty, and staff. Um, this program is run by Teaching and Learning Services, and we regularly hold workshops that share information about teaching and learning um, to library faculty and staff. So because we already had this platform in place, it was just a natural place to start teaching um, librarians about AI. And we developed what we started calling our AI chat series. Um, so last summer, we hosted a series of three different workshops. Um, and the slides to these workshops, if you're interested in them, are also in the bibliography um, that Ben shared earlier. But we hosted three workshops about AI. Um, our first workshop was called Nothing But the Facts, and it was just an overview of generative AI and talked about like functionality and capabilities and the implications it would have for users. Um, our second workshop was called the ChatGPT Learning Lab. Um, what happened is users would come to the workshop and then would be broken into small groups, um, and we would walk them through how to use ChatGPT um, and give them the opportunity to kind of play around and test it out and ask it questions that were relevant to different subject areas to see how um, AI would approach um, like reference questions and assignments in their subject areas, which was really interesting. Um, this workshop also, we did have some pre-work where we had um, librarians listen to a podcast about ChatGPT and student use of it. And it was really interesting to kind of help um, build some empathy for students who were either using or not using AI and why they were or were not using the technology. Um, our final workshop that we hosted was the ChatGPT Learning Lab, or Teaching Lab, I'm sorry. Um, so this is when we started talking a little bit more about how to incorporate AI literacy into their own teaching. Um, we talked a lot about the AI module because we had just finished building it at this point. Um, so we kind of walked librarians through this module and we also did show them our ghost citations activity and had them go through the activity with us. Um, and again, that we specifically built for our English 101 students, but built with um, kind of implications for both undergraduate and graduate students. Um, so librarians had something, um, some materials to get started talking about AI with their um, subject areas. Um, so our AI chat series ended up becoming extremely popular. So we decided to start hosting um, what we're calling our AI chit chats, which are once a semester. Um, what we do in um, these meetings is like they are just a discussion group. There is no content um, being shared. It is just a discussion group. Um, we come up with a series of questions where we normally ask about like, you know, have, what are your departments doing about AI? Are they talking about it? Are you involved in these conversations? How does AI have like implications for your subject area? Um, what are you thinking about AI? And this is really just a discussion group um, with mostly the subject librarians are the ones who attend. Um, but this is just meant to be a discussion group to kind of just share thoughts about AI and just be in community and having a conversation with each other. Um, so these have become popular, so we will continue to do them once per semester. 
Um, and so far, what we've learned from doing these AI chats with the librarians is that like our conversations about AI are changing a lot, depending on especially the academic departments. Um, some librarians are talking more about AI to faculty than others, which we kind of expected. Um, but librarians are really enjoying the opportunity for knowledge sharing and discussion, and it just really gives them the opportunity to like talk and feel seen um, and learn more from each other. Um, it's also really helped us create a better community with our subject librarians. This is especially important because the University of Maryland does have several um, libraries on campus and our subject librarians are spread out across several different libraries on campus. Um, so we're not all always together in one place. Um, so by creating this community, what's really helpful is that the next time there is a major shift in library instruction, we have a group and we have a community in place ready to, to discuss it. Um, and I think it's also really helped um, other librarians see that like AI is in all academic departments and really globalizing the technology. Um, and it's allowed us to just kind of naturally start having some critical conversations about like the environmental impact of AI, bias and racism, labor issues related to AI. We've been able to have like deeper conversations about AI through this group. So where do we go from here? So obviously AI is still a constantly evolving technology. And so we all have to be constant learners. So uh, we have a couple of different categories of things uh, that we're gonna keep doing in the future. So in terms of updates to our instruction, we now have the ability to get out of reaction mode and start planning more holistically. What was important for students to know about AI in 2023 is a little different than what's important in 2024. And what we wanna emphasize in our instruction is undergoing changes as well. So we are going to update our lessons as well as our AI module and LibGuide with info from current AI models. So we're focusing on exploring ChatGPT 4.0, which has some expanded capabilities over GPT 4 and 3.5. Uh, so for instance, it's a little bit better at sourcing sources that actually exist. The issue is now with its selection of sources. So we see an opportunity there to talk to students and get them to reflect on how they choose sources themselves and talk about appropriately constructing a bibliography uh, based on what AI does and does not do. So we're also always continuing to reevaluate how we present AI in the classroom semester by semester. We've previously heavily focused on inaccuracy issues, but based on the conversations we've had with students, they're ready to move further. So in spring 2024, we found most students were already aware that AI had accuracy issues. So we're able to move beyond simply letting students know that the issues exist to more in-depth conversations building on that knowledge. So some other new activities that we're considering include activities about prompt engineering or on evaluating AI sources found in the wild. So we are gonna continue the theme of engaging in conversations with our stakeholders and community. We want to expand these chit chats to students as well. So we've talked to undergraduate students about their AI usage on an ad hoc basis. So we want to engage in more structured discussions with undergrads and grad students. We have uh, some existing platforms to leverage with this as well, with our student advisory board and the Fearless Teaching Institute workshop series. Um, and this is something that I think anyone can do at your own institution, just taking a look at what structures and programs you already have that can be channeled in some way towards these types of discussions and discovery. We're going to continue to solicit instructor and program feedback about AI instruction in the English 101 classroom, as well as incorporating AI literacy into other academic partnerships of ours. We run a semesterly workshop series with the Office of Multi-Ethnic Student Education, which are hour-long workshops focused on a single topic. So we've previously run a critical citation workshop talking about citation justice and intentionally citing women scholars of color and other marginalized scholars. So we think this is the perfect venue for an in-depth discussion of AI bias, how it shows up in information systems, and what this means for AI and research and the day-to-day. -day. Finally, we have a few considerations specifically moving forward at our institution. UMD has just launched uh, the AI Interdisciplinary Institute at Maryland, which is going to house our future AI majors and design the new core curriculum AI for all courses, which are uh, conceived as being applicable to all majors. So we're keeping our ears out for ways we'll be called on to support and instruct those courses. We are updating the AI module this summer and hoping to add advice on addressing AI popular sources such as images and articles authored by AI. And finally, we're keeping our lines of communication open with our stakeholders and the communities we have responsibilities toward, continuously learning from each other and learning new ways to support each group.
So with that, we want to acknowledge some key contributors to the project we've been talking about. Uh, Mona Thompson from the Teaching and Learning Transformation Center was our collaborator on the AI module and helped open a lot of doors to connect the module to instructors. And uh, also on the note of going to every AI workshop we could get our hands on, uh, I actually met Mona when she was leading a workshop uh, in early spring 2023 for campus on AI. Uh, Hal Domey III and Katie Shilton were the folks who kindly filmed our explanatory videos for the AI LibGuide module. They are with Trustworthy AI and Law and Society and our faculty at UMD. And uh, Hal Domey III is actually our new head of the AI Interdisciplinary Institute at Maryland. Um, finally, Daria Yako, who was a graduate assistant with Teaching and Learning Services, played a key part in writing the module and designing our AI learning outcomes for English 101. So thank you so much for your attention. We have, again, our bi bibliography linked here at the short link in QR code. We have a couple of lesson plans and worksheets, the aforementioned guides, and some further resources there. Um, we appreciate you being here for our presentation, and we're happy to answer any questions that anyone has. Thank you so much. That was great. Um, yes, does anyone have any questions? We'll put them in the chat or um, unmute and ask. 